Welcome to Eventful Endeavors, secrets to crafting the perfect celebration. If you're planning an event and looking for useful tips from industry experts, you're in the right place. So get ready to take some notes and we'll dive right in. This is Eventful Endeavors. All right, welcome back to another episode of Eventful Endeavors. Today we are here with Sally Shin, uh, the owner and creative mind behind Pretty Little Events, which is a West Coast-based events uh, planning company. So first of all, Sally, thank you so much for doing this today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Sean, for having me. So the way we always like to start out with everybody we have on is just kind of asking how you got started in this in this industry. What was the what was the story there? Um, I sort of fell into it. Um, I have a background in hotel restaurant management. So in my corporate life, uh, I used to plan private events and do a lot of things with restaurants and event spaces. Um, and the transition just seemed super natural. Um, the next step, um, once we started having kids, I really didn't have the, uh, the time to be able to do mom and then work nights, weekends, holidays, hospitality hours. So it was just a transition and it just made sense. Right. So then you can kind of make your own schedule more doing this kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So work, you know, be home and be um, present during the week. And then on the weekends, have parties and weddings. Sure. Um, yeah. So are you doing mostly, is it mostly just weddings or you do all kinds of events? Like what's your kind of main focus with the company? Uh, our bread and butter is really social events. So any type okay. of social events that entails like birthdays, showers, um, corporate events, holiday parties. And then we have a few weddings throughout the year. Um, we used to focus on weddings, but now we're in a life stage where we have so many parties and so many um, things in one day, like a, a one Saturday, that um, our weddings are very limited and um, we take on just a few a year. Okay, so you, you actually have, do you have like a relatively uh, decent sized team so you can do multiple events in one day? Correct. Yeah. I have about nice. five girls right now um, and they are all over um, and depending on the area, whether it's LA, Orange County, San Diego, um, they're there to assist on the weekend. So if we have multiple things going on on a Saturday, then we have, you know, all of us who would be um, available to do like one party here and another, someone else is doing another party or set up a breakdown. So... Yeah, that makes that makes life so much easier to start expanding so you don't have to get sucked into everybody wanting their event on the same date. Uh, yeah, so there's only that. a limited number of Saturdays yeah. in a month. You have four, four Saturdays know. and trying to, yeah. trying to um, maneuver everything. But yeah, right. absolutely, we make, we make it work. So when did, you, when did you go solo? When did you start the company? When did you leave the corporate world and do yeah. that? Yeah, well, it's been a journey for us because when we first started, there was no such thing as social media. So, wow. you know, 16 years ago, um, when I first got my client, my first, very first client, I went to her house. It was an in-person meeting. There's no Zoom. There's nothing like that. Uh, sure. No FaceTime. <laughs> so I went to her house, gave her this portfolio that I had printed, and um, she looked through, it was kind of like a lookbook, and she looked through our past events, and she hired me. Um, so, you know, the first good eight years of it, I feel like was all word of mouth, just trying to, you know, get your word out there through different websites. Um, and then, you know, social media came along and Instagram came along. And that's when I really felt like, okay, you know, it's a lot easier to get the word out there. It's a lot easier to um, get connected with so many people. Um, so we really made the jump um, doing this full time about seven to eight years ago. Okay, cool. With the with the with the social media boom and everybody being able, to, is that still how you get most of your stuff? Is just through like social media yeah. spreads and word of oh, mouth yeah. like that? Most definitely. Um, well, now we've been doing this for so long that we have a good clientele and they come back right. to us year after year. But yeah, any new inquiries or anything um, like that, or they've seen something on Instagram. Oh, you know, I love this party that you did. Um, I think social media is a, a huge thing for small businesses. 
So, um, so yeah, we, Instagram is great. Um, Facebook's kind of phasing out, but, uh, sure. I need to get on like TikTok. <laughs> I hear TikTok's good. I, I've talked to so many people about this and I, I can't, I want to, but I'm not, I'm bad at Instagram still. Like I'm still like learning social media and like, <laughs> I don't have, like, it takes it, like making little mini movies. It just seems so yeah. daunting. It's a, another full-time job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, it just seems so uh, tiring to do all that. But yeah, daunting, it's, yeah. it's definitely uh, something everybody's on nowadays. So I'm sure it's only a matter of time where we have to be on it. We have, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I need a tutor. Uh, <laughs> so speaking of social media, so this is always interesting. Um because I, I, you know, I've always played and done the shows, but I didn't get into the events world until like the last five years, really, like doing the corporate stuff. So social media was already really big then. So aside from like, you know, word of mouth spreading, you know, your business, how social media kind of uh, like changed with like, uh, like trends, like things you've seen that yeah. you used to see at events that now they don't, you know, people can see things on a um, TikTok or Instagram. Uh -huh. like, I want that at my event. Like, have you noticed a lot of that, like uniqueness so, coming because of that? I mean, it is super unique because it, in the the party world, right, everything is visual. Whether right. it's some sort of an installation or some sort of a design, everyone's seeing this little picture in a square. So when they reach out, they're like, I want this. This is what I want. And then you start to get into like, budgeting and the realities of how much every single thing costs. So a, a lot of social media and a lot of, you know, clientele that come to us and they don't know what, what a budget should be or, or what a good budget should be to achieve that. So it's, a lot of it is um, just um, sharing, you know, how, how much things are, um, giving them the knowledge like, hey, this is how much a cake goes for nowadays. Right. You know, a two tier, three tier cake could go for $500 and up. And, you know, um, when you're looking at one little Instagram post, um, really breaking down how much things are, I think um, clients are like, oh, okay, so they don't see that there's a price tag behind it. And it's our job um, as designers to be able to take a client's vision or a client's budget. Everyone has a budget. Everyone has a, a, sure. their own vision. And then making it into a reality, right? So whether it's scaling it, down or doing a version of that um so i think social media is a lot of it is like um you know what we what we see is not real <laughs> right yeah yeah so um yeah. so so that's that's i think the challenge and you know what the cost of everything being you know our cost of materials cost of wood paint you know to to produce these things overhead everything has gone up um you know, in the last, you know, yeah. after COVID. So it's very difficult because it, automatically right there, there's already a 30% increase in, in, in what our budgets used to look like even like three years ago. Yeah. I've noticed that too. Everything got much more expensive after COVID. Very. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, myself included, it just, things changed, you know, Yeah. Um, after that thing. So, you know, you kind of mentioned budgeting. So that makes me wonder, you know, whereabouts in the process do you usually come in with your, with your clients? Like, have they already kind of found a venue? Do they have sort of an idea of what they want to do? And then you come in and kind of mold it, or do they just come to you and say like, Sally, like, I want to throw this event. It's all you, or is it a combination of both? We love that. We love when clients come to us and say, Hey, this is, and they're really just, you know, upfront. This is how much I want to spend. This yeah. is where we are. And then we just kind of take, take it and run with it. Um, that's that's probably the best case scenario because then we are able to manage the whole project as a whole and really know like okay how much we're going to allocate towards the venue how much are we going to allocate towards food and beverage um, what is your flower budget going to look like so we can really just line item everything and we're if they bring us on in the beginning process however some clients come to us and say oh I'm having my party here um, okay then I can gauge all right well you still need rentals. Um, you still need, right. um, you know, music or whatever. Um, so then I can budget that way. So we're really, you know, it's, we have a full planning service. We also have a partial planning service and then we have day of. So day okay. of is, is, it's similar to weddings, similar to what, you know, what we do with wedding planning. Um, same thing with party planning, because now 
a party is like a second wedding. Everyone's, you know, the, these parties are getting super extravagant, super, um, it, like even for kids' parties, where it, yeah. it feels like sometimes we're planning another wedding. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so so the process is really similar when it comes to weddings and parties for us. Um, and then it, it's just on a smaller scale for, for like a birthday or something. Um, so, yeah, we could come in at any point. Um, a lot, a lot of the times people do come to us because they've seen something. They're like, oh, I love this thing you did with this party, this design or, um, the balloons or whatever. So that's how they, that first, that's, you know, what catches their eye first. And then we, we, we have that, that conversation, that consultation, like, okay, great. You know, like what, what, what are we working with? Where's your venue? You know, and then we get into the logistics of everything. So, you know. Along the lines of like, you know, doing all these weddings and or all these events and having like, you know, a lot of people on your team, how do you do you cap yourself like at, at a year of like a certain amount of events you want to do or like how many can you do throughout an entire year? Do you yeah. limit it? Like what's your kind of capacity there? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, COVID changed all of that. Everything. Sure. I mean, before COVID, I don't even remember life as an event planner before COVID. Um, I think <laughs> it's a like that, world. Yeah, it's like that boom happened where, you know, we right. couldn't celebrate for a year or two years. People started canceling their baby showers. So they're now they're like, oh, my gosh, I never had a baby shower. Now I want to go all out on my baby's first birthday or whatever. This Even graduations, you know. Right. Oh, I didn't graduate senior year because it was during COVID. I want to have a huge mm. graduation party or, you know, for college or whatnot. So, um, so it changed everything. And I think with the boom that the event industry really showed up, I mean, we were working like crazy, you know, for, yeah. for a little bit for that, that year after every, everything opened up, I think everyone was celebrating something. Um, it and was it was nuts. A, <laughs> yeah, it, it was a great, great year for us to really just pump out tons of events, um, and I think, I don't know, like 60 to 80 events in one year. Um, um, I want to say that's that's kind of the number where we were. Of course, that's not the norm. That's not what 2023 or 2024 is going to look like. Sure. Um, definitely 2024, I've seen, you know, a huge, like, uh, a quiet time in January and February. Um, and then things are starting to pick up again because the weather's getting nicer. Or I don't know what it mm. is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I would love some in- insight on that. But yeah, I think um, now a comfortable number so we don't kill ourselves. It's not 60 to 80 for sure, because that was um, definitely just working all the time, right. never seeing family, not having, you know, work life balance, not having a single Saturday, Sunday off. Um, so I would say like 50 would be great. Um, right. That way we can really focus on um, elevating our events, giving our clients more time. Um, even Mm -hmm. one-on-one time because you know with 60 to 80 events it was definitely there wasn't enough hours in a day so so yeah um, I I think this year is going to be uh, one of those years where it's going to really show us where are we going to be with events how many events are we going to do a year yeah so it's 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 changing again right and we're kind of getting into that like okay the COVID boom happened now that's mm-hmm. settled down. Now we're back to like, okay, so this is going to be kind of the new normal for yeah. a bit, you know? Yeah. And I'm so- confused. You know, I know you're in California. I'm in California and I'm confused because I thought like January was usually my slow season and then January was insane this year. So oh, good there's, like no, there's like no consistency with like yeah. when, is, when it's going to be yeah. slow out here. I have yeah. no idea anymore. Yeah. So. I mean, us too. January is historically the slowest month. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, this year was, it was it, for us, but we did have all of a sudden like January one, two, three, like we're, we started off the year just like yeah. all, working and then a um, couple of months, couple of weeks of, you know, downtime, which was great. And then just recuperating from the holidays and then, right. and then trying to get back into it again. Yeah. So let me ask you this, cause you've done a lot of events and this is always one of my fun things to ask is like, out of all the events you've done, what's something that stands out to you as being super unique? Like one of the most unique things you've seen in an event, something that first thing that pops into your head of like, that was really, really cool. Um, so, you know, we do a lot of kids parties um, and 
none of our kids' parties are, are ordinary. They're at, they're sure. they're very over the top, and um, our clients really love to celebrate, go big or go home type of thing. Yeah. Um, and the number one Instagram post we had last year um, was this Bluey party. Do you know what Bluey is? No. What's a what's Bluey? So it's it's a show on Disney. But it's like okay. a cartoon. And um, like my daughter is obsessed with it. I don't know if you have kids. No, I don't. Not yet. Okay. But uh, right. so I'm not familiar with Bluey. I'm sure okay. eventually I will know what Bluey but, is. You know, but, like yeah. adults love this show. It's a yeah. cartoon, but adults even okay. love it because the, the the it's written so well and the story is so great. So you should watch an episode. I should watch called, it. Yeah. Called Bluey. But um, it's, um, you know, we did this elevated Bluey party. And I don't even know, it's like the biggest party, like, uh, you know, so many shares, uh, like the number one post. So yeah. it's really memorable because it was like a cartoon. <laughs> you would think, yeah. you would think like, oh, it's just a little kid's party. But it was more than that, because I think how we approach the party is if you go to a kid's party, Station, I don't know the last time you've been to a kid's party, but how are you going to make I'm it brother. fun for adults? How are right. adults going to find it um, in an environment or atmosphere where like, oh, this is chic. This is nice. This is not, you know, what I thought a kid's party would yeah. be like. But still keeping it um, approachable and friendly because after all, it's a kid's party. Yeah, so that one definitely was super memorable. We, done, we did a lot of um, cool things. We did a fringe installation, a balloon installation. We brought in like different lounge seating, table seating, cocktail seating. We had full service catering, entertainment. So it was just, it's just one of those moments where I was like, ah, oh, like this is the party that I would want to attend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds awesome. I, yeah, I wish I'd seen the show. So were people like in costume or was it just like the decor? Like what was like the thing that everybody was like? That just, uh, I think it the was idea because, of it, you know? yeah, I think it's because the design was pretty impactful um, sure. right, when you walk into us it was on a basketball court and we nice. had transformed the basketball basketball court you would never know that that's what it was so wow. when you walked into the space you're just automatically transported to um you know this bluey world um and it, you would not know that underneath you um underneath the the grass was a uh, hardscape <laughs> like we right, brought yeah, in, yeah. We brought in, you know, flooring and everything. So that's awesome. That is really cool. Yeah, I've never seen the show, but uh, that's that's interesting because we, you know, our gig we don't do a lot of um, children's party because we play yeah. a lot of older music songs for adults, so yeah. we don't do a lot of that stuff. So I I never even thought that like kids. I mean, my my birthday parties when I was younger, we didn't do anything fancy like that. So no, I'm yeah, yeah, <laughs> and neither did you know. we. Yeah. Yeah, like that sounds like sounds like they're throwing big parties for the kids, and that's a uh, that's a lot of fun. So, um, similar question. This is always my favorite one. Is on the flip side of that, what is kind of your? I call it like the do not do this kind of list in any type of event, like something that you're like. I always tell my clients like, if you think uh -huh. this is a good idea, it's not. It will be cringy. I've seen it. It never <laughs> works. Or, or uh -huh. even further than that, like something you've seen that actually was so uncomfortable just very cringy you know that has led to you making these rules yeah i don't know i i like to, my number one rule in event planning is even if you're going to create one little moment whether it's like okay. the main focal point where you take photos or um like the the cake or you know it to, to really make at least one area like an impactful, well put together, intentional space. Um, because sure. I th a lot of the times I think when people try to do it on their own, um, they spread themselves too thin and they think, okay, well, I have this space, but I have to decorate all of it. So then when they try to decorate the whole space, it looks really sparse. Um, whether right. it's like, okay, trying to put, um, you know, helium balloons here and then it the rest of the room looks you know really bare um so why not use that budget to make at least one area impactful because you're going to take all of your photos there in that area whether right. it's that that backdrop or that that area where you're gonna take all your group pictures like the an instagrammable moment 
um, I think is what everybody's looking for. So um, when things become cringy, I think is when, um, when, when I see DIY done and it's not, um, they're not focusing their attention on like creating that one moment yeah. and, and, yeah. and then everything else just kind of falls, you know, short. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, I, I want to ask because I've noticed a lot of what you've kind of been talking about throughout this uh, conversation is a lot of like decor based stuff and, uh, you know, um, that kind of thing. So is that your main passion? Like when you do these events, are you really into like decor and like the look of it more than like the logistics and all that stuff? Is that where you think like you really shine? Um, I think we're known for our, our designs. Um, and I think that's what attracts our clients because they have the same sort of aesthetics. Sure. Everything that happens behind the scenes, whether it's a timeline or a schedule or lining up vendors, budgeting, um, space planning, menu planning, staffing needs, um, you know, seating chart. Right. I feel like our clients, that's not the fun part. That's not why they yeah. want to partner with the planner. Sure. We do all of that, and I think that's a huge chunk of the work that we do behind the scenes um, to really pull off events like this. Um, you definitely do have to um, focus on um, making sure that you do have a solid timeline and things for the party. But for the most part, when I'm on a phone call with a client, they want to talk about design. They want to talk about yeah. color palette. They want to talk about, oh, this is my theme. This is my vision. You know, yeah. um, so I think that's what really shines through, especially in social media where you're you're judging everything by a picture or judging everything by right. what you see in a story or a reel. Um, but we do 100 percent. Half of our job is behind the scenes, making sure all of those elements that you're talking mm -hmm. about, like outside of design is taken care of, too. I think people sometimes don't realize how much actually goes into planning these things. You know? Yes, yes. <laughs> and I don't think people think about it either because a right. lot of my clients, you know, when we do hop on a call and we talk about, you know, the design or whatnot, they're not asking, okay, so how many surfers are we going to have? You know, like right. they don't, they, they don't want to talk about it. I, I actually have to bring it up and be like, okay, to execute your party and to make sure it goes off seamlessly, we, we need the staff. So that's, those are the conversations we have to have to sure. logistically execute uh, a party. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, and this kind of segues me into my next question is because, you know, I notoriously have told several people on this podcast that when I got married, I naively was like, I don't need a wedding planner. I'll be fine. And then learned very quickly. That was the dumbest decision I could ever make. Um, and I did get one and it was oh good so, so worth it. Like I learned my lesson very early. <laughs> Like I said, I hadn't gotten into events before that. Now I look back on my young self and I'm like, you were not smart. <laughs> um, so my question then is like, with anybody just starting to plan an event of any kind, like what's your number one piece of advice? Um, step one, like what's your piece of advice? What would you say? Um, just research um, because I think a lot of the time when clients come to us, and they don't really know what things are going for, like you, you know, how you said you didn't think you needed a planner. But, um, right. you know, once they've done their due diligence, they've done their own research, they'll soon realize, oh, wow, okay, I'm in over my head. Um, yeah. I do need the help. I, I am, at, at the very least, going to need a day of coordinator um, for my wedding because otherwise I'm the bride and I'm going to be doing all that. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so uh, yeah, I think um, just just knowing that if you want to enjoy that day where you have spent, you know, a year, two years planning and spending, you know, investing so much into it um, financially and just just your time that it goes off and that you're able to enjoy it um, and be a guest of your own celebration. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then. Um, you know, really um, having uh, like priorities of, okay, what is most important to us? Is it the photography? Is it the food? Is it the experience for our guests? Is it um, the flowers? So really kind of having like, okay, my top five things that are most important. And sure. then, and then after that, maybe the, the lesser important things like, like invitations, you know, we don't really care about the paper, what paper suites look like, or 
we don't really need a videographer. So just having kind of a list of what's most important and for you. Right. And that, in theory, that should also help with your budget a little bit too, right? Because then you can be like, well, we want to save some money for what's more important for you. And this is less important. So, you know, when you look at that kind of thing, is that kind of how you can oh, manage yeah, it as absolutely. well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because we've had a lot of brides in the past who, you know, wanted to make sure their photography, food, and flowers really stand out. Right. Um, but they're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to DIY my invitations. Um, sure. Save, you know, say. 500 to a thousand dollars there on invitations. Um, so, so for sure, it, it really prioritizes yeah. where we allocate, um, budget. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's definitely something to look at going forward. I mean, I, you know, I always tell people when I talk to them for the first time, like, you know, cause I'm, I do the music. So I'm like, is that, where's that list mm. for you at most important? Like, yeah. you know, are we, are we up there? We are like, ah, you know, we care more about how uh -huh. it looks than cool. Yeah. That way I know, like, if this is important to you, like, let's, let's have a chat about it. So. I mean, I'm going through yeah. that right now with a, with a couple, they're like weighing out the, the pros and cons of, okay, if we have a DJ and an MC versus, you know, a live band right. um, and how much that's going to cost and how that's going to fluctuate the, the, um, the budget. Um, but, you, and then I have another a bride, um, who wants to have a DJ. It's not super important, but it kind of is because she expressed, Hey, I want a DJ that's going to bring the energy. That's going to get people onto the dance floor. That's going to create that like, Oh, um, uh, moments where they're not just sitting at the, at the table and they're going right. to come out and participate. So yeah, the, in that case, if a bride is telling me that 100%, I think it's so important to get the right DJ, yeah. um, MC on board. Yeah. Yep. And this is why it's good to have planners like you, cause you probably have a network of many DJs that you know, who's good at what, so you can pull from, right? Exactly. Yeah. Their personalities, yeah. are they, you know, more outgoing? Are they going to bring that higher energy or some, some, you know, brides and grooms, they don't, they don't, you know, maybe that's not the vibe they want. Sure. Have. Yeah. Everybody's different, you know, and Everyone, that's why it's yeah. good to have somebody, you know, you can sit there and Google all day and find your vendors, but it's like, it's just so much easier to talk to somebody who's like, I've worked with all these people. I've seen them. I know your personality. I know their personality. Uh -huh. You guys need to, you guys need to meet. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so aside, we're getting close to the end here. So let me ask you this, aside from planning weddings, like if you were doing something else with your life, what would you be doing? Like, what are your other like major hobbies? What are you passionate about? I feel like I'm happiest when I'm creating. Um, honestly, it's, I've done so many different things. Um, and the happiest times are when I'm passionate about um, doing something creative. So sure. I, I thought about this and I was like, you know, even if it's like, I used to, I used to um, make jam at home. And okay. I used to, you know, like it could be as simple as making a sauce or making a jam or something. Any, anything that gets me, um, I mean, I love food too. So I think yeah. if, 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 I, if I weren't doing this at a capacity of event planning and being creative that way, it would definitely be something to do with food. Okay. You like to cook? I love to cook. Yeah, I think that's yeah. I think that's how I unwind, especially after a crazy long weekend. I'm just like, I just want to be at home and be in comfy clothes and turn on some jazz and open up a bottle of wine, get some fresh bread and, you know, right. um, some deli meats and like, you know, cook and eat and, you know, just be home with the family. Um, yeah. I'm such a homebody. <laughs> Yeah, me too. And it's a battle when you're when you work this kind of job where you're on site a lot and doing this stuff. And a lot of them are long days, and you're out for like ten hours. I'm like, I just want to be home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you know, like when I think about that, I'm like, you know, at least when I'm doing that, and it is tiring sometimes. It is hard on your on your body. You don't know that the time is going by because you're so. Sure in love with this job that you do i'm so yes. you know i'm like I, I can't believe i get to do this but for a living and be creative um so when i am you know working those 16 hour days sometimes we wake up at like 5 a.m we don't get home until like 9 p.m um after our breakdowns or whatnot um you know at the end of the day i'm like wow you know at least it doesn't feel like what i felt like um doing these corporate jobs where i'm like oh my gosh i don't like what i'm doing 
but I actually right. do love it. Um, and I think the only other thing that I would find that much love in is being in the kitchen or something to do with food. Sure. Yeah. Well, if the wedding industry starts to get slower and the events start to slow down, maybe you'll, we'll find you uh, open in a restaurant or something. One exactly. Day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. If let, just be, real quick before we go, if you could choose your favorite type of food, either to cook or to eat, what would it be? Like favorite type of cuisine? Uh, tacos. <laughs> tacos. One hundred percent. Oh Got my it. gosh! I I don't know. I think I'm spoiled because I have LA right here. Sure. Best tacos ever. You can get you know yep. street tacos for two dollars or fancy tacos for like five dollars. But they're all great. Yeah. All wonderful. <laughs> they're so good. Um, I don't know. I I don't think I yeah. can ever move out of SoCal because of the taco scene here is is amazing. Yep. And and when even I, at home, you know, Taco Tuesday is so easy. We just, you know, make our own chips and salsa. Yeah. My husband's like frying up uh tortillas and we make our own like, you know, chips and dip and I don't know, tacos are life. Right. <laughs> yeah, I came back from Australia yesterday and I got back to the States after three and a half weeks and the first thing me and my wife said was we need Mexican food. Oh, <laughs> like, yes. I was like, oh, We yeah. need it right now. Yeah. So that was the first thing we did was get get Mexican food and it was great. Um, anyway, before we, uh, uh, get out of here, is there anything else you wanted to kind of mention? Anything else we missed? Anything else you want people to know? I mean, obviously we will link to all your social media and everything. Uh, so people know where to find you, how to get in touch with you, should they be booking an event, but is there anything you kind yeah. of wanted to mention before we, uh, uh, hop out of here? Yeah. You know, the only other thing is, you know, we're always pivoting always. I think, you know, the one thing I learned from, from COVID is you have to continue to, to evolve and pivot your services. Um, and, you know, we were so excited, like 2024, uh, we've been able to um, have a, a small little kind of creative space. It's called the Anerton Warehouse. Um, and oh, cool. um, it's it's an extension of our, our home base, our workshop. Um, so we have, you know, our offices. Um, I'm in one of the offices right now. Um, and then we have our workshop where we do all of our custom builds, like backdrops and painting and, you know, oh, wow. all that sort of stuff. And then extending out to that, we have um, a thousand square feet of like creative space. So, you know, we use it for photo shoots. We use it for, um, you know, any photographers who want to come in and, do, you know, do uh, mini sessions. We've done um, birthday parties, baby showers, bridal showers. Um and uh and workshops you know if a creative sure. wants to come in and teach have a class teach a workshop and get some students and we've done that so so yeah we're really excited it's um it's just like a blank uh canvas for people to come in and just use it um and and i think as long as you know if i'm creating that's when I'm happy. So I think this venue, you know, we're so excited about or not venue, but creative space um, sure. because we want to be able to provide that. Like, you know, my yeah. challenge, you know, planning little parties is where do I have my party? I just want an open space where I can have a have put things together, invite some friends. And that's what we created. Great. Where where is it located at? Just so I know. It's in Fullerton. It's in Fullerton. Mm -hmm. Great. That's awesome. And you got that recently? Is that a new, we, a new yeah, kind of addition? We just finished construction um, in November or December. And wow. um, we started offering it um, in January or February um, on Pure Space. Uh, we're right. on Pure Space. And, you know, we have an Instagram, the Anerton Warehouse. Uh, and, you know, it, I actually am going to have a site visit right now after I get off this call, meeting a client nice. here for another birthday. Yeah. Great. I love it. Well, I'll um I'll also link to that too, and I'm gonna follow you guys after this. So that's really Thank exciting. You. Um, that's exciting. I'm happy for you guys. I'm happy you got that space. That'll that that's just great. That's just expansion, and that's 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 gonna be uh, a really cool addition. Thanks, John. That. So yeah, um, glad Appreciate to hear it. about all that. Um, anything else uh, before we sign off? I know you got to go meet a client, and yeah. I gotta get back to helping people plan their events as well. So we should probably do that. Awesome. Well, but, thanks, um, Sean. It was so yeah. fun to talk and chat. And um, I'm glad we finally aligned our schedule. Yes. Thank you for yeah. doing this. I appreciate it. It's been great. Um, and we'll talk soon. All right. Okay. All right. All Have right. a good week. I will. You too. Bye. All right. Bye.
Thanks for listening to another episode of Eventful Endeavors, Secrets to Crafting the Perfect Celebration. We hope to have left you with some actionable ideas for your own event. If you like the show, please subscribe and definitely leave us a review. We read every comment. So until next time, happy planning and see you soon on Eventful Endeavors.